Back on March 23rd, just over two weeks before recording this video, Tesla Model X owner and Apple engineer Wee Hung was killed as a direct consequence of his car hitting a dividing barrier on Highway 101 in Mountain View, California. As usual, in covering this fatal accident, I'm going to stick to our standard editorial policy and not including photos or video of the aftermath of the accident out of respect for the deceased. But with more information now being released into the causes of the accident and Tesla confirming that Autopilot was active at the time of the collision, we've decided that the collision, like the recent Uber fatality in Arizona, deserves some attention on this channel. Let's deal with what we know of the collision first. The accident occurred when the Tesla Model X, in autopilot mode, as Tesla confirmed last week, crashed head-on into a lane divider barrier. Upon impact, the front end of the Model X was destroyed, effectively cleaving off everything front of the A-pillar. Mr. Hung survived the initial impact and was rescued from the car by passers-by as the car's battery pack was starting to spark and fizzle. Shortly after, the frontmost portion of the battery pack did catch fire, partly engulfing the car. Firefighters were able to bring the fire under control and safely extinguish it, but the front end of the vehicle and part of the interior was destroyed by the fire. Unfortunately, the driver died shortly after the accident of his injuries, and of course, we would like to send our sympathies to his family at this difficult time. Coming so soon after the autonomous vehicle collision which resulted in the death of a pedestrian in Tempe, Arizona, this new Tesla collision has very much been in the spotlight. But as is often the case, the causes of the accident don't appear to be clear cut and instead we probably should be looking at the bigger picture on how we view and interact with semi-autonomous vehicle hardware. Tesla first. It's issued several statements on the collision. The first noted that the lane divider barrier hit did not have an active crash attenuator at the time of the collision. Designed to reduce the forces involved in a head-on collision, crash attenuators work by slowly compressing upon impact to absorb crash forces and thus reducing energy to vehicle occupants. But this particular crash barrier had already been involved in a collision a week before the accident, meaning that it was already in the compressed state at the time of the Model X crash. And that, in one official's words, meant that hitting the barrier was like hitting a brick wall. In a second post on the collision in which Tesla detailed the crash and called it devastating, it noted that while Autopilot was active during the collision, its system had detected that the driver's hands were not on the steering wheel for six seconds before the collision. Earlier in the same drive, it said the car had issued several visual and one audible cue to let the driver know that they should be holding the wheel. Adding that data proves using Autopilot makes drivers and passengers safer in its cars than a vehicle without Autopilot capabilities, Tesla said that Autopilot does not prevent all accidents, but makes them less likely to occur. It even linked to a government report from earlier this year that shows Autopilot reduces crash rates for Teslas by 40%. Tesla's most recent post has led some to blame the driver for the collision and his own death. At the same time, however, the family of the deceased has said that he complained to Tesla multiple times before the collision about his Model X veering towards the barrier on his daily commute. Critics have struck back, asking why he would still use autopilot if that were the case, again laying blame at the feet of the driver. However, in the past few days, several videos have appeared online of autopilot-equipped Teslas demonstrating similar behavior in similar situations, failing to correctly follow lane markings at an off-ramp lane divider and heading straight for the crash barrier. Obviously, these videos aren't necessarily representative of normal autopilot behavior, and I'm sure plenty of autopilot users don't have these problems, but nevertheless, it does highlight a potential weakness in the autopilot system. And therein lies the issue. This collision, as with so many other collisions, does not appear to be a clear-cut case. Obviously, the NTSB investigation still has to conclude before we know for sure what happened, and it's already ticked Tesla off for blaming the driver before the investigation had concluded. But what is clear, as has been the case with previous collisions, is that there are some changes which need to be enacted to prevent future accidents. First, Tesla, in fact, any other automaker developing semi-autonomous technology too, needs to work harder on educating drivers on how the technology works and what it can and can't do. And while there are those who will use the system inappropriately, a better failsafe is needed to ensure that accidents like this simply cannot happen. And just as some countries like the UK have decided to include things like 
setting sat-navs as part of driving tests, I think we should consider making driver aids like autopilot, supercruise, and even more basic things like lane keep assist part of driver's ed and driving testing. But regardless of the driver's actions, a semi-autonomous or fully autonomous car should detect and react to a static object like a crash barrier. And if current sensor technology can't see it reliably and act to avoid a collision, then better sensor technology needs to be developed. Finally, I think we need to have a frank discussion on local, national and international levels about just what we expect of autonomous or semi-autonomous vehicles, where blame for accidents really lies and where regulation should play a part. As this accident seems to suggest, everyone from the driver to Tesla and even Caltran has a part to play in causing the accident. And until all agencies, drivers and automakers work together to improve safety, we're just going to keep seeing accidents like this. Simply put, we shouldn't be playing the blame game here or putting Tesla or anyone else on a pedestal. We should all be asking, how can we make sure that this doesn't happen again? Well, that's it. Thanks for joining me. See you next time.